All right, um, we're still in Unit Four, and we're talking about a key concept. We've been we've been talking about this in a, to some extent already. Well, to ha a part of this problem, what Belisi has written down is the opposition between attributive and predicative position, and underneath it, the opposition between attributive and predicative function. Okay, um, and these are two. The, the, there's, there's the way, uh, the formal aspect, the, what it is uh, attributive position and what is predicative position, and then there's what they mean, okay, what their function is. So we've, we've seen lots of examples, I think, of attributive position. What we're talking about is when you put a modifier of any kind, so it can be in the castle, that's a modifier when we're talking about the, the, the cows in the castle, okay. Um, as a chunk of unit, as a noun phrase, the cows in the castle ate wheat, okay, or something, grass, right? That's a, a, a chunk, a noun phrase, okay, where you are a modifier of the cows, you're specifying where they are. But you can also say the multicolored cows, um, the dappled cows uh, ate wheat, okay, or, or grass, okay, um, with an actual part of speech that's an adjective. We also have used genitives of nouns like Homer and his poor brothers, right? The brothers of Homer, okay? And you've seen that when you want to make clear in a Greek sentence that of Homer or in the castle um, belong to um, the brothers or the cows, you have a way of doing that by a word or a rule. And the word or a rule is this, um, a modifier uh, that is in an attributive position if it follows the article that agrees with a noun. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to immediately follow. There can be a little word like de, which means and or but, or chi, or sometimes even a little bit longer word, in between the article and the noun, but it has to be very, very close to it. Okay? Um, and so don't get thrown off if it's not totally next to it. But the modifier that follows an article goes with the noun that that article agrees with. Okay, this is the thing we've been trying to explain to you. And that's what defines uh, attributive position. Um, the notion is, uh, the function of attributive position is to specify that a given modifier goes with that noun, is an attribute or specifying an attribute of that noun. The, uh, the concept of attribute I don't think is clear until you think about what is the opposite of it? And so we want to also talk about what's the opposite of attributive position and also what's the opposite of attributive function. Um, a, a modifier has attributive function if it's um, specifying an attribute of the thing, something that comes with it. Okay, the opposite of that is something that's a predicate of a thing. So here's a simple sentence. Maybe you should write this down underneath there. The green elephant is hungry, okay? In that sentence, the adjective green is an attribute of elephant. It comes with them, okay? And in a Greek sentence like that, you put green, to be super clear, in attributive position after the article that goes with elephant. But hungry is a predicate of the, of the elephant, okay? It's something that you who speaks the sentence, the person who speaks the sentence is saying is true about the elephant, okay? It's not something that the elephant comes with and that's plain and simply there, okay? Mm -hmm. It's something that's subject to verification and being asserted about the elephant, okay? So we make a distinction between an attribute, something that's that comes with a concept, a noun, and a predicate, something that you, the speaker, are applying to it, okay? So that's the difference between attributive and predicative function. In the two little Greek sentences that Belisi has written on the blackboard, on the green board there, and labeled one with an A and the other with a P, we've got ha anthropos, ha agathos, in which the adjective agathos follows the article ha that agrees with anthropos. Okay? Remember in Greek, it doesn't have to immediately follow the article because you can repeat the article of a noun. So because the case and the gender and the uh, number are expressed in the article, you can 
and track what, go, what goes with what. A Greek likes to do things like anthropos, ha agathos, the, the human being, the good one. Okay, mm -hmm. um, so it's good to get used to the fact that it's not always the good human being the way it works in English. All right. Um, so that modifier, agathos, is an attribute. And that means that anthropos agathos up there is not a sentence. It means the good human being. It's, that's all. We don't have a sentence. We don't have a verb. We don't have anything. But the second one in which agathos, you notice, agathos ha anthropos, the agathos does not follow the article ha that agrees with anthropos. It comes before it. Okay, it could come after uh, uh, anthropos, and it would still be not in attributive position, because once you've got the noun there, unless you repeat the article, attributive position is done. Okay, in order to make agathos agree be an attribute of anthropos, you'd have to repeat the article, or you'd have to put it after the ha. In other words, you could say ha agathos anthropos. That would still not be a sentence. That would mean the good you would be. Or you have to say ha anthropos ha agathos. Okay? You could also do anthropos ha agathos. Okay? That would still mean the good human being because the attribute agathos is still following the article that agrees with the noun. All right, but we put a period after that because agathos ha anthropos, at that agathos is not an attributive position, it is a predicate. Okay? of anthropos. It's something that you, the speaker of the sentence, is saying is true about the human being. It's saying the human being is good. Mm -hmm. Or it could be a generic statement. When you use the article with a noun, it can mean human being as a concept. Okay? So human being is a good is good. Okay? Um, and notice there's no word for is, okay? And in, in, um, in Greek you can do what grammarians call Noun sentences, nominal sentences, sentences that have no identifiable verb in them. And we have a, a, a couple of these in English. The one that most people still remember and that's still functioning is the sooner the better. That's a sentence, right? And it has a subject, the sooner, and a predicate, the better, but no verb, right? Uh, this is typical of the way in which um, noun sentences functioned in the Indo-European languages and still do in Greek. That is, they are a way of expressing generalities that are not anchored in time or space. Mm. And that's why there's no verb. Okay? If you say, the sooner is the better, you're, you're saying, or at least for the moment. But the sooner the better is, applies everywhere and to all situations. Okay? So... In Greek, when you say agathos or anthropos, it's a generic statement about human beings. It's, it says the species of human beings is good as a totality. Okay, So it's not a kind of thing that you throw around at a cocktail party. right? It's, a, it's not a banal utterance. It's a proverbial utterance. Okay? Um, the book doesn't understand that. It thinks that you can just leave out the verb to be, and that's a sentence. Okay, mm -hmm. But it's a special kind of sentence in real Greek. All right. Okay. okay.